everyone, welcome to a slightly different kind of video than I would normally do this time. Um, I've been asked by a number of people about the modelling and the diorama books I've used in the past and still use today um, as guides and advice on techniques, products, etc. and to perhaps make a video to list them, so here they are. Um, this video is for referencing, as I mentioned, diorama books, building books such as creating buildings, vegetation, terrain and diorama and the planning and execution of the models. Um, in the bottom corner of the screen I'll have the name of the book and the author and in the notes for the video I'll also add a link to the website that each book is available to buy from. I'll go through each book pretty much in the order I've bought them over the years from the first kits I've bought to present day. Uh, so I'll start at the beginning, um, back in the mid 2000s when I first got into the hobby. Uh, the first books I bought and still to me some of the best for composition and diorama ideas is a series of books by Verlinden Publications. Throughout each book is a number of dioramas, most are already built, um, a few have a brief guide to their planning and their build, and obviously all using Verlinden's huge range of products from buildings to figures to accessories. Uh, some kits may of course now be difficult to get hold of due to the age of the publications, um, but these are really nice books uh, with some great details and photos. There's lots of text to read with pictures on the, uh, the completed models themselves. Um, unlike most of the books later, which give detailed step-by-step -step guides of the builds, the weathering, uh, etc. Next on the list is Building Military Dioramas by Osprey. Uh, first published back in the year 2000, uh, there's no doubt better modelling books around these days. But this one really helped me in the beginning uh, in the design, the composition and building of a diorama in some clear step-by-step -step, um, instructions and guides uh, without being tied down to a particular product or manufacturer. Um, it focuses on two diorama scenes, uh, urban and rural. Um, and in particular, stood, stood out to me the, uh, the battle diorama, which was inspired by a painting of Churchill tanks breaking through a hedgerow in Normandy onto a German position. Um, there's really nice instructions on painting soldiers and accessories, the standard painting and weathering of a tank, um, making trees, groundwork, and although as mentioned before, better these days with newer techniques um, and products, um, it's still a nice little book for the price. Next uh, is Capturing Clervo uh, by its creator Claude uh, Joachim, I think it's pronounced. Um, this is a gorgeous book following the creation of a replica of the castle and town of Clervo uh, during the time of the Battle of the Bulge in December 44. Um, this is a huge diorama that took the author eight years and 10,000 hours to complete and is put together in sections going on public display sometimes around Europe. Um, the time and the patience and the artistic detail is incredible to build most of the town from scratch and replicate the nearest of details is both impressive and admirable. Um, this book has great advice and techniques on scratch building houses, roads, the river and the walls and the products that uh, you need to, to, uh, to achieve this. Uh, a must, I would say, for people who like to build their buildings from scratch uh, and not use the kits that are available. Um, the number of vehicles and the figures uh, are quite nominal for the size of the entire model. But the book itself is a huge read and is full of inspirational pictures, loads of text um, to help in the detailing of the work. Um, this is actually the second of two books on the subject uh, and the model itself. The first is how the castle above the village was made. Um, but this book uh, is based on the construction of the village below uh, and for me is highly recommended. Uh, 
Uh, these now are a series of three books by Assignon Press, I think it's pronounced, uh, called Landscapes of War um, in volumes one, two and three. Um, these books are great. Uh, the first two concentrating on landscapes such as groundwork, water, snow and ice, vegetation, etc. Um, and the third book is based on rural subjects, uh, buildings, stone walls, um, pavements, that kind of thing. Um, these books use a lot of MIG and Vallejo products amongst others. So obviously to use and promote these items throughout, uh, which is fine because at least uh, then you can see the product numbers you need uh, to try and replicate the works um, you see on the pages. Uh, something I find is not always as easy as it looks. Um, these books are really well, uh, really well put together. Uh, they've got clear pictures, instructions and details. This is the third book, uh, the rural one, as I mentioned, um, focusing on buildings um, and structures and things like that. Um, again, using Vallejo uh, and MIG products um, to explain how they do the, the process of putting these together. Um, really well recommended. Again, these books are really nice and, uh, and well worth a look at. So next up is book number five uh, and is a little way away from the diorama world and concentrates more on figure painting. Called Painting Guide for Figures of World War II, as you can see, this book details uh, step by step the processes of painting figures uh, from the tools and the paints that you need uh, to the priming, base coating, light and shade of the paints. Um, then there's the all important face painting, as you can see. Um, as well as towards the back of the book, uh, uniform guides to some figures with paint numbers of Vallejo paints, uh, which is really pretty useful if you're trying to uh, look up the right reference colors for, for painting figures. Um, although my figure painting uh, isn't even close to the standard of these or even many of the stuff that you see on websites like YouTube, um, I have picked up a lot of tips from this book, um, particularly on the shading of the uniforms and the equipment um, as here, for example, um, it's helped me a lot, the paint colours. Um, so all in all, again, another really recommended book um, and a nice read. Book six is FAQ Dioramas, uh, Water, Ice and Snow by Ruben Gonzalez. Um, it's made in partnership again with AK, um, using many of their products, um, as you can see here, for example. It gives some detailed step-by-step -step guides on how to create uh, some, some beautiful work. Um, here, for example, the riverbeds, doing a riverbed scene um, with all the algae and the moss, even uh, recreating um, with some scratch-built fish um, to add detail to the scene. Um, this is an excellent book on the three subjects, water, ice and snow, as I mentioned, um, and how to use the different products um, to create the scenes. Um, I used this uh, book a lot when I was doing my recent Gospodin diorama, um, using this, the advice that they give on snow, which is uh, further towards the back of the book there, for example. Um, it really helped me. It was quite invaluable. Uh, the quality of the instructions and the products um, is, is great for recreating work uh, from the pages of the book onto your own model.
Finally on the subject of diorama builds is this book, How to Make Buildings by Georges Costa. Um, this is the most recent book I've bought, it's only a few months uh, released and it's basically a terrific guide to putting together the sometimes confusing and head scratching mini art vac form packed plastic model kits that you can get uh, and then painting both them and the terrain around them using MIG paints and products. Uh, this book again has been uh, made uh, published rather um, in association with Mini Art and MIG um, using their products. Here, for example, you can see um, a guide on which uh, the equipment and tools and paints you might need uh, to begin to start building these models. Um, it, the reason that it's a good idea for the, the product placement is uh, you get to know what product numbers is needed to replicate what's on the page. Um, from the paints to the varnishes, uh, oil, point, oil paints and washers. Um, a number of the models have scratch built items added, such as roofs, uh, the posters and the drain pipes, uh, which are useful and there for example, which are all well explained on help, how to help to improve your dioramas uh, in all the detail of the work. Um, also in these kits, uh, obviously they don't have much interior to them. Um, so again, this helps to explain uh, and give you some ideas on uh, wallpapering, flooring, painting the insides. All in all, it's a really great read uh, for anyone who might have struggled, like me, occasionally with mini art kits um, or are looking to build their first one uh, without leaving the sometimes unexplained uh, the gaps and holes. Lastly, uh, this final book isn't a guide for modelling at all really, or kit builds or products, but is an excellent for referencing uh, modelling German figures and explaining uniforms, um, etc. Even if you're not really interested in making models, um, it is an excellent read on the uniform and the equipment of the German army during World War II. From the helmets and the headgear that was worn, um, going on to the uniform, um, lots of detailed photographs and illustrations. Um, it really breaks down everything that was required, the accessories um, by the Wehrmacht. Um, Deutsche Soldaten, uh, this, as I mentioned, uh, references all the field equipment, uh, the, even the personal items goes on, as you can see there, the belts, the belt buckles, um, all the different types, different variants, um, and even breaks down to the, uh, the cigarette packets, the tea bags, and even the toothbrushes that was issued to the soldiers uh, during the Second World War. Um, I find it useful when looking uh, to add and then to paint equipment uh, on the kits uh, but it's still nice nonetheless just as a historical interest. Um, it's got great colour photos, detailed text uh, and all in all it's just a really nice book and a really interesting read um, and one again that I uh, highly recommend. So that's it. So hopefully that little guide will be useful to some of you who want to improve their modeling abilities, their techniques uh, and product advice. Like I say, I found use in each and every one of these books, got some valuable uh, use out of them. And as I mentioned in the notes, I'll have some links to sites uh, who sell the books, sell them and have them available. Uh, now to crack on with the current project, Ghosts, get that finished. Um, as I've already got a couple of kits ready for the next project. Uh, they're getting impatient in their boxes, ready to be built. Uh, so thanks for watching. Please add in the comments any other books you'd suggest for other modelers to, uh, that you recommend for them to look up. Um, that would be great. Um, subscribe to the channel and follow on Instagram uh, if you want to keep up to date with projects. And I'll hopefully be back soon with the final part of this uh, Jersey Occupation anniversary build.